Hi, folks. I'm here with Sally Steinwachs today at the Somerville Presbyterian Church, where the Irondequoit Art Club is holding their lovely holiday arts and crafts show. I hope you can join us. We still are meeting, not uh, tomorrow, not on Thanksgiving, but on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And Sunday, we'll be doing our wrap-up. Now, I have um, Sally with me, and she's one of our wonderful artists and friends. And uh, I, I'm going to be interviewing her about her beautiful art, uh, award-winning, much of it. So, Sally, please tell me, who had the biggest influence on you in your art? Well, other than my very first teacher at my early... Um, my early 20s, who was Jean Primo. Then 20 years ago, uh, my a friend of mine, Ju Bernadette Wider, gave me the book The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. And this is a fantastic 12-week course, self-directed. And it's all about creativity. It's not just about painting. And it really just expanded my mind and just blew my whole art view up. And I've actually facilitated courses in this since. And Julia Cameron is still alive and is making her living with this kind of work. So one of the prescriptions in the book is to keep morning pages. And morning pages, she suggests, is three pages a day. And often what happens is that the first two pages are just stream of consciousness and you're kind of unloading from yesterday or whatever. But then on the third page, you get to a, um, a more of a creative moment. And what I've been doing over the last 20 years, I've been doing this for 20 years, I can't believe it, three pages a day, maybe not quite 20, but almost. And on the third page, I often do a sketch of a painting that I want to do. So I thought I want to give her recognition, recognition because I am a disciple of hers in a way, and so, Sally, I noticed that you're holding your journal in your hand and you're going to be talking about it. Yeah, this but is I'm going to do, journal. while you're doing this, I'm going to do a quick scan of your table to show some of the other journals that you have laying here because I don't want to miss out on that. They're too pretty to miss out on. Yeah, and then so you're going gonna, to you're going to be explaining about them. Yeah, you said, we'll, okay? go over, we'll go over and look at this art. Okay. So much of this is inspired by the lake, but also flowers. And this train was actually inspired by COVID, and that's a whole other story. Oh, yes. The I COVID like train. to work in watercolor, but on different surfaces. Either regular watercolor paper that's 140 pound or 160 pound, um, or um, particularly Lana paper, L-A-N-A. -A. And But I also like to experiment with Yupo, with watercolor ground, with gesso. And so if we come back here... I just want to, when sometimes I make little cards too, and, but this year and last year, and I think back to 2019, to honor the journal, to honor the journal, I started making journals and selling them. And these I'm selling for $19 each. But what they are, are composition books with pages, lined pages, and then I enhance the front and back with usually... This is, for example, an original watercolor. This is an original watercolor front and back that was inspired by our first snowfall just a couple weeks ago. And you can see the lake view and some of the snow falling. I, I'm not a realist, not an impressionist. I guess I'm somewhere in between. I'm not exactly abstract either. But I wanted to show you one of these, now I've lost my page. <laughs> so here's, maybe I meant to lose my page, right? Perhaps. Um, yeah, <laughs> because, you. well, here's an example. Now, I just had this vision another day. So here was the sketch that I did in pastel. And then this is the sketch. You can't really, um, it's not good to switch that around. And this is what it turned out in watercolor. Okay. And this is a process where I cover the book with gesso, then I cover it with watercolor ground, and then I color, cover it with watercolor, and then I spray it with Krylon a few times to protect it. So these are, they do withstand. 
But these are different journals, and I think it's interesting to just state this. Karen Pesch makes beautiful journals also, but it's an entirely different process where she hand sews and hand designs each page. I'm not so concerned with that. I'm just, in, I guess what I like to do is embellish the cover. And then I also then right now make a copy and adhere it with good um, paste archival glue for the back. And now, now, Sally, apart from your journals, do you have anything else that, you, that you're selling that you uh, would like to bring out? Well, I, I noticed would like to bring this oh, out. Oh, sure. This, this is a, both a watercolor and acrylic painting of my impression of a very busy Sunday during the summer, which is my lake view. I live on Lake Bluff in Irondequoit, and um, that's a view out, out front. Um, when we have a million boats and we've got people using, I forget what you call those, but uh, like kites. Parasails? Wind, yeah, or parasails or wind kites. Um, so then over here, I, I'd like to show you another one as long as you're you're doing a great job, Sam. Over here, okay. um, I'm gonna, and in the meantime, I might find that sketch again. I'd like to show you this one because this is, I, now this is a subject of many of my paintings. I often do it as a warm-up, but this is not a warm-up. This is later, you know, after the warm-up. This is the birch out front. We have one birch tree down by the lake shore. And this is was my impression on an extremely windy day. But you see the the lake behind it and the foreground of the of the bluff. So that's an example of one of my favorites. This is another example of a favorite of mine. This is I believe I did. When I saw this like a week ago, I said, oh, I really like that painting. But I can't remember where I did it originally, except I think I did it. On, yeah, I think I did it on the cover of one of my journals. And then this was a copy of the cover. But why I like, what I like about it is that I've, though it's a watercolor, I've preserved a lot of the white. And there you, mm -hmm. you do see the impression of a birch. And then those are little sailboats, perhaps. I like, I just like the whole thing. I think this must have been originally done on watercolor ground because I can tell by some of the texture. Now, Sally, I've noticed that there are many others of these are in a browse box, and they're only ten dollars yes. each, and they're yeah. all matted and they're lovely. Why, so these you. are worth coming down alone for to browse through. Oh, this one will be interesting to you, Sam. In my mind, this is another view out the front, and I after I'd painted it, I saw Jesus on the cross. Here. Oh, yeah, and how I, lovely! Yes, I am. So that was a particular favorite. This is a uh, this is a print of a watercolor. Is it now, and folks, print? if you come to the show, be sure to check out Sally's browse box. There's another area, another painting that you did, Sally, that had um, uh, tomatoes and uh, bright apples and bright reds. Here and oh, here's here's so your here's original, original your original idea. The huh? original idea on the on uh, on whatever Tuesday that was in early uh, early October. Okay. Can we can we walk yeah, to the walk uh, fine? Well, while we're walking, we can admire yeah, some of the other. Lovely paintings that are hanging here. I'm going a little quickly, but when you come to visit the show, yeah. folks, you can take your time and browse. Here so, we are. So from this sketch, we go to the finished product. Let me let me just really, go to Sally's sketch yes. and her notes. And my and notes this is exactly. the, the finished product. And here is the finished pro product. It's really and beautiful. This is 27 Very by beautiful. 29 inches. It is a watercolor, but there's a little bit of pastel because I lost some of the white in my basket that's holding the apples. Now, I have to say it was very emotional though when I started this painting. It was either the day of it or the day after when all the children in Israel were killed. Oh. And then, of course, Palestinian children have been killed. And I really was feeling the emotion of children dying. So I did not have this idea. This is probably later in the week. I mean, earlier in the week I've written about it. It was more just blood. I was just thinking of blood. And I 
I didn't publish this yeah, on anything because like I didn't want to discourage people from looking at my work because of politics, but I don't think of it as politics. I think of it as a human tragedy and the slaughter of the innocents. And anyway, so when I started painting, it was just red, red, and then it morphed, morphed into this uh, basket of apples. Then I began to see a pumpkin, then I began to see other things. So to me, it does speak of hope in such a despairing world, in such a, a difficult world. So anyway, I thank you for your time. Oh, thank you for your time, Sally. I've enjoyed the interview, and I hope the folks that are watching this little video are enjoying it too, and I'm sure they are. Please come and enjoy all of Sally's art and all the rest of the art that you'll see in the show.